Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. Using Muller Bresla principle, draw influence line diagrams for the shear force at D, middle point of span BC of a continuous beam shown in the figure. Compute the ordinates at 1 meter interval. A two span continuous beam is given. In this beam, we have to make influence line diagram for the shear force in the point D, which is in the middle of the span BC. Let us remove the shearing resistance from the point D by inserting a sliding device. Because of that, the beam is cut into two parts. The sliding device maintains the same slope at both the sides. Then we have to apply pair of unit loads. On the left side, the unit load should be acting downwards and on the right side, it should be acting upwards. Now let us take DC and find out the reactions using the rule sigma v is equal to 0 we can calculate rc for rc we will get a negative value that means our assumption is wrong we assumed that rc is acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards now let us find md let us assume that it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Let us take moment about C. When we take moment on the right side, clockwise will be positive and anti-clockwise will be negative. The unit load is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 2. So 1 into 2. MD is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, so it will be negative. For MD, we got a positive value, that means our assumption is correct. MD is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For DC, MD is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So for DA, it should be acting in the clockwise direction. Using the concept, we can find the reactions in the point B and A. First, let us find RB. For that, I am going to take moment about A. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. MD is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be negative. The unit load is acting towards the point A in the clockwise direction, so it is also negative. The distance is 2 plus 4, 6. RB is acting towards the point A in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 4, so 4 RB. For RB, we are getting 2. By applying the rule, Sigma V is equal to 0, we can find RA. For RA, we got a negative value that means it is acting downwards. Now, let us see the formula to calculate the ordinate for shear force. FD is equal to YDX upon YDD. To find out YDX, we have to make sections. You can see that there are three sections. All of the sections should be made at the distance of x. To find ydd, we have to apply the formula ydc minus yda. We already know the slope value will be same on both of the sides. So theta da is equal to theta dc. Now let us take ad and make these two sections and find out ydx. From the point A, we have to make the sections. In AD, there are two parts. 
AB and BD. So we have to make two sections. One section in AB and one section in BD. Now let us find MXX. That is the moment in the sections. We are calculating the moment from the point A. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The reaction in the point A is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is x. So minus 1 into x. The reaction in the point B is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. Then we need this distance. This distance is x minus 4. We have calculated the moment from two different sections. So both of these terms should be separated by the dotted line. Then let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. Then let us make the integration. When we integrate this, we will get this. For integrating x, we can use this formula. For integrating x minus 4, we can use this formula. After integrating, we are getting this. C1 is the constant. Now, let us integrate this equation again. When we integrate, we will get this. C2 is the new constant. In the point A, there is a vertical support. If there is vertical support, there will be no deflection. So, when x is 0, y is 0. In this equation, let us apply x is 0 and y is 0. When we do that, we are getting C2. We have to be very careful when we apply these two values. We should not consider this term. This term is only applicable when x is more than 4 meter. So we have to apply the values only inside of these. In the point B also, there is a vertical support. So there will be no deflection. In this case, we can make one more condition. When x is 4, y is 0. Let us apply c2 is 0, x is 4 and y is 0. In this equation, when we do that, we will get this. After calculations, we are getting c1. So, we have found c1 and c2. In the ei dy upon dx equation, let us apply the value of c1. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. In the point D, we have to find the slope. In the point D, x is 4 plus 2, 6. So instead of x, we have to apply 6. When we do that, we are getting theta dA. We know that theta dA and theta dC will be having the same value. In the EIY equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. So finally, we have formed an equation for YDX. We have to find the deflection in the point D. We know that the point D is located when X is 6. So in this equation, let us apply 6 instead of X. When we do that, we are getting YDA. Now let us take DC and find out y dx. In dc, there is only one part. So we have to make only one section. The section should be made at the distance of x from the point d. Now let us find mxx. The unit load is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is x. 1 into x, we will get x. The moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. Now let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. 
then let us integrate when we integrate we will get this then let us integrate this equation again when we do that we will get this c1 and c2 are the constants in the point d we have calculated the slope in the previous step here the point d is located when x is 0 so let us make one condition when x is 0 dy upon dx is minus 34 upon 3 ei in this equation let us apply x is 0 and theta dA is minus 34 upon 3 ei when we do that we are getting c1 in the point c there is a vertical support if there is vertical support there will be no deflection so when x is 2 y will be 0 in this equation let us apply x is 2 y is 0 and c1 is minus 34 upon 3 when we do that we are getting c2 in the EIY equation let us apply the values of C1 and C2. Finally, we have formed the equation for y dx. In the point D, we have to find the deflection. We know that the point D is located when x is 0. In this equation, let us apply x is 0. When we do that, we are getting y dc. Now we can calculate ydd. The formula is ydc minus yda. Let us apply the values. Finally, we are getting ydd. We know the formula to calculate the ordinates for shear force. Fd is equal to ydx upon ydd. For the portion ad and for the portion dc, we have formed ydx. Let us apply them. Then let us take 128 upon 3 inversely and then multiply. After the simplifications, we have made two equations. Now let us calculate the ordinates. From the point A to the point D, we have to use this formula. When we use this formula, we have to be very careful. From the point A to the point B, we should not consider this term. Only we have to apply the value of x inside of this. From the point B to the point D, we have to take the whole formula. From the point D to the point C, we have to use this formula. In the point D, we will have two shear force values. One will be negative and one will be positive. Using the ordinates, we can make the influence line diagrams. We know that in the point D, there will be two ordinates. One ordinate will be negative and one ordinate will be positive. The ordinate in the left side will be negative and the ordinate on the right side will be positive. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.